Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Omega. Welcome back to another Apex Legends video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about solos mode, how to win in solos, how to get more kills, how to survive longer, how to do more damage, basically everything that you would want to know to get your first solo win or to just win more in general. Before I get into that, I just wanted to let you guys know because I haven't talked about this in a few videos. I am doing a 5,000 Apex coin giveaway for the month of August. If you guys want to enter, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, and then follow the Gleam link down in the description below. Now, while the tips that I have for you guys are definitely going to help you win solos, if you're not that good of a player already, I don't think this is really going to do much for you. You definitely just have to keep on practicing, make sure you're hitting shots, just being a, a well-developed player in Apex Legends, and then you'll definitely start seeing results after you apply some of these tips. And for those of you guys who are more visual learners, I will have some gameplay in the background of me winning a few solo games, just in case you guys would rather just watch that instead of listening to me ramble. But anyways, let's get into the first tip. So the first tip that I have for you guys involves landing. Now, I know in Apex Legends, it's really easy just to want to land as soon as you're able to and get off the dropship and on the ground as fast as possible. But I've realized in solo mode that doesn't really work out all the time because the people who usually win the first fights of the game are the ones who find purple, blue armor, a gun, and they get really lucky in a sense and they're already basically kitted up. So unless you think that you're an exceptional player and that you have the gun skill to be able to pick up like a P2020 and just annihilate anybody no matter what kind of weapon or armor they have, then then go for it, land Skull Town, land in the, the high populated areas, but if you're someone who's kind of newer to the game that doesn't really think that they can have, you know, the gun skill to actually take out a ton of enemies at once, definitely try to wait a little bit before you actually drop into the map at least wait like five or six seconds and go off to a point in the map where there's not many people dropping. Also just try to keep in mind the legend that you're playing and where you think that legend would excel on the map. So for example, Pathfinder is really good at anywhere that has high ground. Skulltown is an excellent option for Pathfinder. Even if there's a ton of people that land there, he can quickly get onto the high ground and jump back down whenever he wants to using his grappling ability. Caustic, on the other hand, is probably better for places like Bunker, anywhere that has close quarter engagements, which I guess School Town would also be good for that. But you kind of got to think about, you know, who you're playing and where their abilities will actually excel the most. Next up, we're going to talk about the best weapons to use in solo mode. So in my personal opinion, I think any weapon that can just melt people really quickly is going to be your best bet. So try to look for weapons such as the Devotion, Havoc, Spitfire, R301, R99, and also snipers. Because what I've noticed a lot of times in solo mode is that when you pick off someone with a sniper rifle, or maybe you don't kill them, but you might do a little bit of damage, a lot of time that person will try and fight you before actually healing. So it's a really easy way just to do a quick, you know, four. 40, 50 damage to someone and then just rush them as fast as you possibly can and I found this technique to work really well if you have like a longbow and a havoc or a longbow and a devotion or maybe like a g7 scout and r301 it's really easy to pick people off and just you know get the upper hand because you want to be able to kill people fast if you don't kill people fast other people around the map are going to hear your gunshots and immediately come for you so the faster you kill them the faster that you can actually heal up and it's that much easier to actually win your next gunfight. Now in terms of legends, I did make an entire video talking about which legends would be the best in solo mode. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. But uh, after playing for a little while, these are probably my top four legends. Definitely Pathfinder has to be one of the best, just the fact that he can get high ground and move around the map so quickly. It's definitely an advantage over a lot of the other legends. Gibraltar has actually been really good for me in Apex solo mode. Gibraltar can easily just take a ton of damage and he's basically fine. He is an absolute tank and since your goal in these one-on-one -on -one gunfights is to take as little damage as possible, Gibraltar is probably your best bet just because he already has the tank passive which negates 5% of the damage done as well as his passive that basically just gives him an extra 50 points of shield. Caustic is another good legend to play just because there's already so many people trying to play Caustic and just camp in a building, you know, putting their traps in every single fucking corner so at that point you really don't have to worry about other traps because as caustic you don't actually take damage from other caustic's traps or your own so it's really helpful in case you wanted to storm a building or take out someone that was camping his traps are also just really good for the end game when the circle is very small you can kind of control different parts of the map and know where you have to actually pay attention to lifeline is surprisingly another good legend i kind of put her at the bottom of my list in my last video but i think she's actually really good because i did forget to mention that lifeline's other passive is she's able to heal a little bit faster than other legends and obviously in solo mode that is definitely one of the most important things if you're wounded after a gunfight you really just need to be able to pop all of your healables all of your shields as quickly as possible because there's a good chance someone heard your gunshots and they're going to be coming after you right then and there 
This leads me to my next tip, which is in regard to looting. So I know a lot of people, whenever they kill someone, they immediately just want to run up. And it's like fucking Christmas Eve, seeing what you got for Christmas. But a lot of the times when you do that, someone else is going to be, you know, kind of paying attention to the fight from a distance. And they might see you looting. And that's a really easy way for them to just pick you off or do a little bit of damage and then rush you. So this is really situational. You got to really be able to pay attention to where you are on the map, how many people are left. And if you think going for that death box is going to be a good idea or not, because a lot of times it isn't. So make sure you are planning your escape route just in case, you know, someone starts shooting at you. And this leads me into the next tip, which is what you should be looting from enemies that you kill. So for the majority of the time, you want to be looking for shield batteries, shield cells, and grenades. In my opinion, shield batteries are probably the most effective healing item in Apex Legends. Just because if you're a good player and you apply the rest of these tips and you're able to catch a lot of people off guard, then majority of the time, they won't be able to do enough damage in order to break your shield. So a lot of the times after you kill someone, you'll usually have your shield broken, but popping a shield battery is an easy way just to basically get to full health. I reckon recommend having at least five to six shield batteries if you can and then around three to four med kits you want to save the rest of your item slots for ammo grenades and etc stuff that you might need grenades are also really important just because like i said before we do have watson and caustic which are super annoying with their traps and since this is solo and they have no teammates to yell at them and pressure them to actually move around the map majority of the time they're going to be sitting in a building with their traps surrounding them and it's going to be pretty frustrating. Grenades are basically the only way to counter this, unless it is Watson and she has her old in there, then you're basically fucked. But for the most part, I've seen a lot of caustics and grenades have been really helpful in being able to basically clear out a building, storm them, and hopefully get the kill before they're able to place more traps. So these next couple tips are kind of going to be short and sweet. There's not really a lot I have to explain with them. But the first one is try not to shoot at flyers as much. I know it's tempting whenever you see kind of like a blue or a purple box, but shooting flyers is just an easy way to give away your position. And plus, you know, it kind of glimmers whenever the flyers drop the crate. So it's definitely easy for people to see from anywhere on the map where that flyer was killed. And that's how they know there's just some dude over there shooting at flyers. So it's a really easy way for them to come and pick you off. And especially if they get you while you're looting, then you're basically screwed. I would say try to save flyers for unless they have like gold boxes, maybe purple boxes if you're really desperate and you know you only have like level two armor. Uh, other than that, I just try to you know avoid flyers at all costs. Next, I want to talk about gold knockdown shields because it seems like to me it's more of like a pointless item. A lot of the times when I've had the gold knockdown shield, I would be in close range fights and as soon as I would go down, the guy would just basically finish me off because he's right next to me. And if someone else happened to come along and shoot him, he would see me on the ground or hear me reviving and then just kill me in general. So if you have a gold knockdown shield, try to play more at a distance. It's definitely going to be more effective than rushing into fights and being in close combat. If you're playing at a distance, then you might get lucky and the other person who knocks you down uh, could you know, get distracted by another fight or just something completely you know, different in general, or they could just forget about you. And that way you actually have a chance to hide yourself, revive yourself, and then get right back into the fight. Next up, this is a very broad and general one, but always expect the unexpected. And what I've been doing a lot of times in solo mode is I'm always checking every single corner, every room that I go into, especially when the circle gets smaller and there's not a lot of people around me. I'm always trying to see, all right, where is the scummiest spot to hide? Because that's most likely where people are going to be, especially towards the end of the game. And tip number nine, which is probably one of the most important ones, is always choose good positioning over kills. A lot of the wins that I've gotten, I was left with like four or five people and you would hear a gunshot kind of in like the distance or it would be pretty close by because the circle was very tiny at that point. People would rush over, try to get as many kills as they possibly could, but once the storm came in, they really didn't have an option of where to go. They were either trapped in the storm or they took so much damage from the storm that when they actually got into the circle, they had no health. So it was super easy just to pick them off and win the game. Whenever you're in a situation where the circle is getting very small and you're getting to the point where there's going to be no circle at all, you should always try to position yourself inside that circle. I know it might be considered camping, but at that point, you're just being smart. There's no point going out trying to get kills when you're already in the circle and people are going to be coming to you. So let them come to you. Don't try to always rush the enemy because I'm telling you guys, it is the most frustrating thing when you die in a circle when there's like one or two people left alive. So you definitely want to stay away from that as much as possible. Anyways, I'm going to cut the video here because I don't really have many other tips that I can think of on the top of my head. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you guys enjoying solos? Personally, I think this was like a huge refresher from playing team play in Apex Legends. I've definitely noticed that teammates have kind of always been holding me back and I'm having a ton of fun playing solos despite campers and, you know, people just 
I don't know. There's really campers is kind of like the only issue I have with Apex Legends solo. But if you guys follow these tips, most of the time you're going to be able to outgun those campers. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun for me. Drop a comment down below if you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Peace out.